Here's after. In this video, I'm going to show you how I constructed this beautiful bathroom. Uh, the, the tile floors and the redwood deck. I'm going to give you all the instructions so that you can uh, see what I did and, uh, and then maybe when you do your own bathroom you'll get some ideas. Okay, today I'm going to put granite or excuse me, slate tile and tile this bathroom. You can see right now it's got a, a cement floor. It's about six feet uh, by seven feet. Cement's ideal for this stuff. You can never go wrong going on cement. And uh, the previous owner uh, installed a, a spa tub. And the plan is, is uh, to put uh, the, the slate tiles in here and, uh, and then have a, like a small redwood deck going around the front of the spa tub. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, step one is we take out the toilet. So I, I turned off the valve, gave it a big flush. There's still a little bit of water left in here. I'll take a cup and fill up the bucket with water. And then after that, I'll, I'll disconnect uh, um, the hose and then t undo the, this bolt, undo this bolt, and then lift the toilet off and put it in a safe place uh, so I can continue uh, tiling the floor. Okay, now that the toilet's removed, you take a scraper and scrape off all the, the remaining wax ring and remove all the toilet hardware, get everything all cleaned up. Then we're gonna take a, I got a shop back, I'm gonna clean all this thing up, you know, suck it all up, uh, then maybe give it a little bit of a mopping, make it all nice and clean. So then we'll have a nice clean surface. Okay, uh, the next thing to do is to figure out the center line of the room. So I, I measure from one side to the other side of my trusty tape measure here, and it said 71 and a little bit. So what's half of 70 is 35 and, or, you know, so 36. Uh, so I, I, I think, I did think for 36, it's just a little bit too high. But anyway, I measured 36 to one way. There's 36, I put a dot there. And then I put the tape against that wall and then measured 36 and it came up over here. So that, and there's exactly three quarters of a difference, which of course is the same as six eighths. So I go over another three eighths and that'll be a sign line. So I'm gonna put a line exactly three eighths in, in between here. One eight, two eight, three eighths. And that's my, my center line. And I did the same thing over here. And now I'm gonna snap a chalk line. Okay, now you can see the chalk line. And this is exactly down the center. And I'm only worried about this one axis because uh, uh, the other end is gonna be hidden underneath the deck. And so I can just start with the, the, the 12 inch squares from the beginning all the way back. So uh, I only did it one axis, but if you had a, a square room, uh, you would have to do two axes. Okay, uh, you can see the center line going through there. And we have two different ways to align the tiles. And every time you do a tile job, you have to figure out how you're going to line it. So you can see on the top here, we have uh, the center line going between the tiles. And on the bottom here, I have the center line going through the middle of the tile. And so what we would do is to see how much of a gap that leaves. So we, we got, got, got them in there. You can see how I have the, the quarter inch spacers in there. And uh, over here, it, it would uh, mean, it uh, uh, looks like about a five inch piece of uh, tile on the end. And of course the other end would look the same even though I don't have laid out here. Here, with uh, the center line uh, going through the, uh, between the tiles, you can kind of see it goes up and it doesn't quite fit. I can't quite fit in the last tile here. It looks like I'm gonna have to cut about a half an inch off of uh, the tile there. But in my opinion, I think that'd look a lot better than having like a six inch piece of the uh, tile at the end. So I'm going to align it this way. But uh, uh, it, it, every room has a slightly different dimension and it's going to look a little bit different and you're going to have a different amount cutting off there. The, the biggest problem is, is if, if this gap over here is like a really skinny itty bitty little piece, then you'd move it over uh, another half a tile over and then it would be a much wider piece so it wouldn't look so weird. So that's the, the thing you have to, to look at when you space these things out. It's, it's pretty simple. Now we have to cut down the bottom of the jams. As you can see here, the, the, door, uh, the door jams go down to the bottom here. And of course we want tile going here. So I got a piece of tile. And I'll push this up next to the jam. And then I got a piece of cardboard here. We'll put this up next to the jam. And I have a special saw. These are, are, are spineless saws. And uh, it's nice and wide, so it'll stay level. And then we just cut away the bottom of the door jam. So go ahead. All right, it's your cue. Okay, here.
here's various thin set mortars. This is what you'd use to uh, glue the, the tiles to the floor. And uh, you know, this is the cheap stuff, this is the, the medium price stuff, and this is the real expensive stuff. Uh, the cheap stuff is, is basically just a, a very fine uh, mixture of sand and concrete with a lot of concrete in it. Uh, they call it thin set. It works great. This is all you're going to need, and it's uh, you get a 50 pound sack of it. It's pretty cheap. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's like six dollars or so. The price has probably gone up since then. But it usually comes in gray, or you can get it get it in white. And uh, this is all all you're really going to need. And they, they suggest maybe you mix it up with a little bit of a of a glue glue solution. Uh, now you can also get stuff that already has the glue in there. So I mean, this is good for just concrete floors. You can kind of see it says concrete floors right there. Now here, if you're going over plywood or concrete, this is good. So if you uh, uh, this has an extra glue in it, uh, so it works better uh, there. It's, it's, so you can see where it says fortified thin set. So here's the real premium stuff. And it says for, for uh, it's fortified premium mortar. And it's you know, for marble and granite. And uh, here, let me just pull it. And you can see it's, uh, what this has, this has a, a plasticizer in it. So uh, this stuff's like $15, $16 for a, a bag. And, uh, and the plasticizer makes it to where it's easier to, uh, to set things, especially if you have like uneven pieces of stone and you need to move them around a little bit so it's a little bit more plastic. And uh, I've got a three uh, uh, third of the way full things and I'm probably going to mix this stuff up a, a little bit together because, uh, uh, you know, in that way I'll get a little bit of the plastic uh, uh, properties and a little bit of the, the cheap properties and I can uh, get rid of some of these empty bags here. So uh, to start off the mixing, you put in about, uh, I need a small amount, and you only want to mix enough for like a, a couple hours at the most because it's not going to last for more than two hours. So uh, you know, it comes down to about maybe a three to one ratio or something like that, but uh, you kind of got to mix it up and make it to where it's supposed to be the consistency of peanut butter where you can stick something there and it'll stand up and it won't fall over. So I uh, usually put about maybe uh, a third of the way with water. And, and you're always supposed to add the water first. So you fill up maybe a quarter of the way, a third of the way with water. I'm guessing I'm going to do a quarter of the way with water. And then keep on putting the, uh, the mortar in until it's and stir it around until it's the right consistency. And then you let it wait for five minutes. And then okay. we're ready. I put about an inch of water in here. And then slowly added the stuff in here, mixed up here, mixed up with a stick, mixed up with a stick. And the whole idea is, is to get all the, the lumps out and get all nice and creamy. And... Uh, I see this consistency. You can see the stick just kind of stays there. So it's uh, seems to be holding the stick. So uh, I don't know. It's pretty pretty thick. It's like uh, should be pretty good. So I'll stir it up for a while and let it set for five minutes, and we'll be ready to start. Uh, I guess they call that setup period uh, the stuff will slake, which means it'll even get thicker than what it is now. So. Um, Got all the little lumps out of there and it uh, should be pretty good. Okay, the plan is, is I'm going to have the uncut tiles coming right along the edge here with just about a, a, an eighth of an inch between the, the metal uh, end of the carpet uh, and, and the, the tile. And this will be all uncut. And uh, the ones all along the edges will have to be cut. Uh, so completely all around the edges, complete thing around the edges. So I'm just going to do all the uncut ones now. Then once I get all the uncut ones in, and of course the ones around the uh, where the toilet goes in, I'm going to have to leave out. So I'm just going to put in all the uncut ones now and, uh, and then I'll uh, measure up uh, and then figure out how much I'm going to have to cut and then cut a whole bunch of tiles and put the, the cut ones in there. And the advantage of that is, I, is I'm going to be doing all around uh, the center of the room but I still have the edge of the room so I can, when I can get out of here and I won't be uh, painted into a, a corner because I'll have a little escape path around the, the sides to tiptoe uh, on out of here. Okay, here we're started now. And you uh, can see where I, I start along the entryway. And one of the weird things you notice, nothing's ever flat when you're working on a house. And you can see how this stupid thing is bowed out. And apparently this little carpet uh, entryway thing is bowed out quite a bit. I'm, I'm really amazed at how much of bowed out, but we're, we're going to have to be straight, you know, so the, the tile is still straight. We, we lined everything up with the, the chalk line 
and now we're putting in all of the, the uncut tiles. I'm going to have to, to cut a little bit over here and a little bit on the end and the same thing goes with the rest of these things here. Cut off about a quarter inch on the end and uh, anyway we're, we're at it. The, the most important thing is is we put the spacers in there, kind of jam them in tight, make sure everything's flat. And if the tiles aren't flat we can get a thinner or fatter tile. So unfortunately these things are all uh, kind of mismatched as far as heights go or we put more thin set or less thin set and since uh, we're doing everything with a notched trowel you can push it down. That's the whole idea with the notched trowel is uh, you know there's a little air gap and if you push down harder there's less of an air gap and uh, you can help uh, level the tiles. Cut the tile to size I've got a cheap diamond blade tile saw. I got this at Home Depot many years ago for $80 and I've gotten a lot of use out of it. It's uh, really served me pretty well. Cutting square tiles is pretty straightforward. I think we can all figure out how to, to measure and, and take off what we need and uh, what have you, but to, around the waste pipe, it's a little bit tricky. So let me kind of show you the, the trick I have. Is uh, okay, I got the tile roughly in shape, and of course this will be underneath the, the toilet, and you know, having like a, you know, a good quarter inch to half, at least, at least a quarter inch, you know, maybe around a half inch gap is about the best. So I, I just kind of uh, draw, kind of, where I'm going to cut, and I'll, I'll come around and get that with a, and measure it, make sure I get it just right. Let me kind of do the same thing over here. It's about three eighths or so. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to measure and make a hole, and then then let me show you what I'm going to do here when I cut it off. Okay, side. you can kind of see the outline I made here, where the the waste pipe would be, and I made a whole bunch of little slits. And slate is a very brittle stone. If, if this is marble or granite, you would have had to make them really, really fine, like every eighth of an inch. But I think I did every quarter of an inch. And these things just break off. I mean, uh, I'm trying to do it with one hand here. But I'm going to take a pair of pliers. I'm going to be really careful. And I'm going to break these things off. And, uh, you know, it, sh uh, it should come out pretty okay, easy. and here's the completed cut. And that worked better than I ever thought it would. Uh, uh, I used a pair of pliers and snapped it off and uh, and uh, it worked perfect and uh, I'll do the rest of them now. Here's what the floor looks like after I've gotten the tiles down. You can take a look here. I put a 3.75 inch baseboard all the way around here. Everything's done with the corner spacing. And after I uh, used the thin set to attach these to the floor, I wiped everything off with a sponge. And I was really amazed at how nicely the thin set came off. There's little bits of splash thin set, and uh, just the sponge and water actually got it off. I'm uh, worried uh, next time I spill water here whether the tiles are going to be coming up, but uh, I guess that's just the way it works. Uh, these tiles are, are better than the last tiles I've used because they seem to be more uh, chalkboard slate, you know, harder kind of tiles, and they don't seem to be nearly as porous. So the thin set really wasn't able to soak in. So uh, next time uh, I'm going to seal them because I, I've had problems with uh, with uh, grouting on some old tile the job that I did where it got kind of hazy when I put the, the grouting on there and I had to use like hydrochloric acid to clean off the tops of the tile to make them look good. So I'm going to put a sealer on here and uh, then I'm going to ground it. And then I'm going to seal again because it's really the sealer is really for the grout more than anything, and, uh, and and then I'll have to do a part two and put a little deck around uh, the jacuzzi uh, shower tub here. Okay, now I'm going to use a sealer on the slate. Uh, in the as I mentioned before, in the past I've had problems with the grout staining the slate. This looks like better slate. I think maybe this slate wouldn't get to. Uh, stained by the grout, but I don't want to take any chances. It doesn't hurt anything. I'm using an, uh, an acrylic slate. Uh, this is the Tile Lab Matte Sealer and Finish. Uh, they say it's for indoor and outdoor use, and uh, it uses acrylic. Now, there's a number of different types of sealer. There's some that's kind of like an oil base, that's kind of like a penetrating oil, and it's, you know, all this stuff is really expensive, and uh, this is a, the acrylic, and then there's some that's more of like a like a shellac that'll actually 
you know, coat it, make it look shiny yellow. Uh, you'd use that for like uh, raw uh, tiles, uh, like terracotta tiles, slato tiles, and you cover those and they're like all varnished and sealed in. And I, I didn't want to go that route. Uh, I, I just want to enhance the, the natural stone beauty a little bit. You'll get to see it in just a second. And the way you can tell this is acrylics uh, based, uh, acrylic will, will never yellow. Uh, that's what they make the, the World War II uh, airplane windshields out of is acrylic and you can still see those things today and they've never turned yellow. But if you look way at the very, very, very bottom here, very, very bottom, ingredients, water, acrylic polymer, and then they have a wax and an ethylene or a glycol ether. So uh, if you notice the, the second uh, ingredient is acrylic. And uh, this is the stuff that I've really had good luck with. So you'll get to see it in just a second. I'm just going to take a sponge, uh, a slightly damp sponge, and wipe it on. And it doesn't use very much. I mean, this stuff is not porous. So it, it just wipes on and it doesn't soak in. So just a very small amount will uh, cover this whole uh, area here. So here's what the tiles look like after I put the seal around there. As you can see, they look up almost the same as they did before, except they seem to be a lot more colorful and brighter. And uh, there is a more of a sheen. You can see it's a bit more of a sheen, but uh, it's what they call the matte finish. So uh, they don't look wet. But they don't look uh, kind of as dry and as dull as they looked before. So let me Get around here so you can get, get some nice views of, uh, of all the color that, that, that kind of came out on these tiles and how nice they look. And uh, like I say, it really did a, a nice job bringing out all the colors. And uh, boy, I, I just love this acrylic sealer. This is gray sanded grout. Now, you basically, I like the sanded for slate. Uh, sanded is for wider joints. If you have a very narrow joint, you can use the unsanded. Uh, like when I did marble with a very, very, uh, like an eighth of an inch or th three six or uh, um, uh, it's half of an eighth, the six, 16th of an inch spacing. I used the unsanded and it worked very well. But uh, for the, the slate, you need a much wider grout line. Um, a quarter of an inch is about as small as you should really go because of the unevenness of the tile getting all lined up and everything like that uh, to kind of hide the differences between the edges and kind of see how some of the edges are chipped or some of the edges are, 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 are slightly chipped down and everything. You need a wider grout line and you want to go with the sanded tile or sanded grout. So I mix this up according to directions and I've been stirring it for about five minutes and according to the directions, you let it set for 10 minutes to slake. And that uh, that'll means it'll, it'll thicken up and get nice and thick. And then you give it one final stirring. And then it's ready for use. The way you, you use it is you plop down a big pile of it. And then you take a, 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 a what they call a, a, a grout float. You can see this one says the economy grout float. And uh, it's basically a hard rubber kind of a thing. And... Uh, you, f you uh, force the grout in really hard. You, you force it in and, and make sure it goes all the way down all these holes. And uh, you, uh, after you get it all nice and forced in there and it's all uh, nice and thick, then you wipe it off at a 45 degree angle. And, uh, and then the directions even say to remove it from the tile to maybe hold it like a 90 degree angle to kind of like scrape off any excess on, on the tops there. But the important thing is, is you want to have a nice kind of an even dip all along in here. And then if you do it like the 45, you have this at 45, and this 45, and you go along there, it should be uh, uh, fairly full. And, and don't worry about having it being flat or, or you know, having a real dip. Because later on, after it's uh, partially halfway dry, then you take a, a wet sponge, take a wet sponge, and then you carefully wipe around, and that'll... Uh, the sponge will uh, make it kind of where it's dipped in between here. So um, I'm gonna give this uh, about 10 more minutes to set up and then I'm gonna get going. Well, I just got done grouting the floor. I forced the, the grout in 
at a 45 degree angle. And then after it was all forced in, I scraped off the top, holding the, the, the grout float at a 90 degree angle, wiped it off, and this is what I did here. Here's an interesting thing. There is a, a lip through here, and I noticed that it wasn't really straight. So it's a little bit narrow over here than it is over here, but uh, you know, things aren't square when you're working on houses. You know, walls aren't straight. This stupid little metal uh, entryway was uh, curved. So I, I filled that all up with grout. And uh, according to the instructions, after you do this, you let it set for about uh, 10 to 20 minutes. And then you take a sponge and then you uh, carefully wipe off everything to, to make it look nice and clean. And uh, you're basically uh, pointing up all these uh, joints to where they're kind of uh, U-shaped on the top and meeting up with all the edges of the bricks. You don't want to wipe away too much or else uh, it won't look right. Uh, but you have to be really careful with that just to, you know, just make everything smooth. And then, uh, and then I'll report back. One, one other thing I wanted to point out is I used almost all the grout. I don't know if you can really tell, but uh, I'm pretty much down to the bottom. There's not that much left. And uh, this is a pretty small room. As you can see, it's like six by b -b 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 seven. So uh, I, I uh, used about maybe 15 pounds, 12 to 15 pounds of grout. I had a 25 pound bag and I used slightly more than half of it. And um, I didn't expect to use this much grout. So uh, you always wanna make a lot more than you, you think. You know, If you're looking at that small package and saying, well, that should be just about enough, you better go ahead and splurge and get the uh, the 25 pound package. Okay, I just wiped it up and you kind of see how I'm going for a nice, smooth, flat joint here. And uh, I'm gonna let this thing dry for a while and maybe even wipe a little bit more because you can see how there's like a, a haze on the top here. And I, I didn't try to like really clean these things up because if I tried too hard to clean up the tiles, I would have messed up the joint. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep keep going at this, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, just uh, give a little wipe, a little bit of wipe, and uh, get all cleaned up. And the, the according to the directions, you take a nice coarse cloth. They they say cheesecloth, but uh, you know, just a nice coarse cloth, and you wipe off the haze after it dries. So, uh, well, I'll we'll report back. Okay, I put the grout in, and uh, one part that really came out nicely was that line right there. Uh, that came out really nicely. Uh, I, I, I did a stylistic choice. Now, when you're putting down floors, there's like hundreds of stylistic choices you can make here. You can vary the grout line, you can vary the grout color, you can put the, the tiles in straight or put them in diamond pattern, or you could, there's a million, million things you can do. One of the things I did this time was when I did the grout is I uh, had it coming up almost flush with the top here. And I kind of maybe wished I didn't do it. It made things a lot harder. Here's my, my sponges. I, I had like a lot of grout left over. It's really up high and kind of a... Uh, so I, uh, since I left up high, I didn't do a lot of wiping on it when it was still damp. And so my sponges didn't uh, really... I mean, I had to really, 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 really uh, work on this thing here to get it all uh, all fixed up and good. Anyway, it's... it's uh, uh, I'm going to put... Uh, you can, and, and plus you can kind of see where all the, like, like this would be under the toilet, but you can kind of see where all the ch uh, the chipped edges are. It kind of goes in there. The uneven the uneven uh, patterns, or the uneven tiles had, had lots of it, so I really wish I'd wiped off more. But uh, still, it worked out okay, although it was a lot of work cleaning up the excess. It would have been nicer, a lot easier to clean it off before it, dry, uh, it hardened. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can't really tell. You, you, you look at everything, you look at it's good, then... After it's all hard and you go, oh man, I have a whole bunch of crap all over this thing and uh, the seams didn't look good and I had to, like I say, scrub with the with the, the sponges, tearing up a whole bunch of sponges. Uh, good thing they're cheap. So I'm going to put some sealer on here and wait till you see it then. Okay, here's the completed product. Put the sealer on and there's really more to seal the grout than to seal the tile. It's a pretty porous tile. But it sure does uh, give it a nice shine. Looks really nice. It's beautiful. And now I'm ready for step two, which is to build a, a redwood deck around the front of this. 
and uh, hopefully that won't take uh, very long at all. So, uh, just get a bit, little better shot of all the stuff here. Just see how everything looks. Well, there it is. Okay, you can see I'm building the deck here, and uh, it'll be a nice uh, little uh, footstep here. And uh, you can see uh, everything's real heavy. It's all made out of two by sixes, and uh, basically, uh, and then of course I got this part that will go along the front. But uh, right now I'm leveling everything. I've got the the level out, and I put these feet down. You see, I've got these little pieces of wood in the bottom. So I get that to level everything out and uh, get it leveled in the back. And then I've got some 5 8 uh, thick redwood uh, strips that I'm going to put down for a decking. And then I'm going to have a thing that kind of goes up and over and then down again that covers the power cord and, uh, uh, and s some of those other little uh, fixtures down there. So uh, this, is, this actually went pretty fast. Uh, and it's real heavy duty. I mean, uh, you know, like I say, uh, I, I could have made a lot, lot uh, thinner pieces of wood, or I didn't even have to use redwood underneath here because it was all going to be covered. But I figured, what the hell am I still doing? Okay. okay, here's the 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 finished framing. I guess I'm all done here. Uh, one one change I did make was I was a little worried about this thing being able to pull out. Uh, you know, it was, it was nice and solid, but but there's still a way that it could have pulled out uh, under some heavy use or or who knows what. So I uh, I took uh, some concrete uh, drill bits and drilled a couple of uh, holes into the concrete and put anchors in there. And I made sure I glued them in and let the glue set overnight and and then bolt or bolted this uh, this uh, two by six to the concrete. So now it's super solid. That thing's not going anywhere. So. Uh, Boy, uh, it was a real drag doing the toenails. I guess I'm not much of a carpenter. Uh, the, at the bottom here, these uh, two vertical things uh, where they come down there, I did toenail them in. And, uh, boy, I'm not good at that. Uh, uh, I managed to get the toenails in there, but uh, one of them had a big head sticking out, so I took an angle grinder and ground that off, and now uh, everything's nice and flat, and now I just have to put the, the outer skin on this thing and uh, stain it and varnish it, and we'll be all done. I'm starting my first course of the, the finishing wood. This is 5 8 inch thick redwood. And you can kind of see there's a funky angle here. Let me tell you what I did. I, I took like a, a, a tool like this. I, I don't know what the hell they're called. But uh, you just put it straight and you measure this angle. And I put it up on my saw and measured up the saw blade. And it came up to be exactly 4.5 degrees. So I'd take a cut do four and a half degrees and of course that would be on two pieces of wood so I, you see how they had to revert, be reversed back to back then I do a straight cut four and a half degree cut straight cut four and a half degree cut until I got what I got here and I'm even looking at this vertical angle and you can see that's not straight so I'm going to do the same thing here okay these are the the six pieces I cut to fill that vertical hole there and uh, that turned out to have about one and a half degree angle there and uh, they're all lined up and and, and anyway, let me kind of show you what I go through to mark these things. Uh, you want to have everything symmetric or else it'll look kind of funny. So on every single one of these, I drew a little uh, line to, to mark the center mark. Of course, uh, I, I use uh, use this figure. This is this thing is indispensable. These things were only like a, a few dollars. I don't know, it was like less than five dollars to buy buy this thing. It's you know extruded. Uh, uh, they call it a, a, a rafter square, and uh, you can see it's got a, a big line mark on. Or, area on one end and uh, it's got a little ruler on there. And then on the ruler you can kind of see at the one and a half inch and the six and a half inch I, I put some marks there. So I just put it up there and then take a, a nail and pushed in there. You kind of see how there's like a like a hole here, hole there, where I took a nail and pushed in. And then I'm going to pre-drill these things. Uh, the reason I pre-drilled, I, I did the top of the deck and it turned out mostly pretty good. But uh, some of those screws, I, I made an artistic decision here. I, I said, well, what would look really good here? So I got one inch brass screws and brass screws are not very strong and when you start stripping when, when the when the screwdriver starts hopping on here you got about two or three hops and this thing's completely rounded out and doesn't move anymore 
So in order to not have that happen down here, I'm going to pre-drill. So I've got a, an eighth of an inch drill here. I'm going to pre-drill and then uh, screw in the brass screws and hopefully they'll go in to where they're flush. I want to have them actually slightly less than flush, slightly indented and uh, you know not have them hop out there. So I, I had some issues with that uh, on the top of the deck so we'll see how it works. Well, the wood's all done. It looks beautiful. This redwood really does look nice. But of course, this is just raw, naked wood. And we got to uh, stain it, put some uh, varnish on it, and then I got to touch up the, the walls to where I kind of, uh, kind of screwed the walls a little bit here. But otherwise, gosh, that looks, that looks beautiful. I mean, every single one of those pieces of wood is just so, so beautiful. I, I can't wait to see what it looks like after it's stained. This is what I got to finish the redwood. I wanted something that looked really good. Uh, I, I guess that's kind of silly to say that, but to something that looked like redwood. And uh, I, I originally got some Minwax finish, and I got it, but they said cherry. You know, it was really a lot of red dye in there, and I put it on the wood, and it just, I had a test piece of wood, of course. I had put it on the real deck, and it looked like crap. It was uh, blotchy with all this red dye in there, and, and then I put some... Uh, 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 varnish on top of it and I, I just was not happy at all so I got this here this is, says natural which means it doesn't have any dyeing at all it's just oil basically this is just oil I don't know what it is linseed oil tongue oil I don't know what the hell they use some sort of a proprietary mix with some solvent in there but uh, I put this on and I put it on like a oh I know about a little more than an hour ago let it let the oil on there. It, it only took like you know less than five minutes to paint this whole thing. It just went on really easy, uh, and then after it's been on there for about 15 minutes, I took a, a rag and wiped off any of the excess oil. Although it probably would have soaked in overnight, but I didn't want it to, to dry uh, on there. Uh, so I wiped up all the excess oil, and it looks beautiful. Gosh, this looks beautiful. And this is just the the, the effect I was looking for. It looks like natural redwood, but only better. And uh, and then to, to finish it off, I got uh, some matte polyurethane uh, oil-based varnish. So this is, like I said, oil-based, not the water-based. And of course, the stain was an oil-based stain. But uh, and this is in the satin. Let me just turn this a little better. It's in satin. And uh, here's a piece of, of test wood I did with this. And uh, it, 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 it looks unremarkable. There's really no sheen to it. It looks kind of like natural wood. And the and I'm really tempted just to leave it like this. I mean, uh, just this oil on here looks so fabulous. I mean, gosh, that, that wood grain looks so unbelievable. Hope you're watching in HD. The wood grain looks so unbelievable that uh, I'm just tempted to leave it just like this. But uh, the reason I want, I'm going to put the polyurethane on here is uh, redwood's kind of a soft wood, and the polyurethane is a hard stuff. It's supposed to have, you see where it says uh, superior durability? It also says fast drying, but of course it, on the package it says two to four hours, so uh, uh, it's certainly not as fast drying as a water-based. But uh, anyway, I, I wanted to give, give a, a durable coating on here, something that would, uh, you know, protect the wood, and this is what I'll do. So tomorrow, I'm gonna let this uh, let the the so-called stain dry overnight. They they recommend eight hours, and uh, tomorrow I will put uh, one maybe two coats, pr probably two coats of the polyurethane uh, uh, varnish on there, and we'll see what happens. Ta-da! Here's the completed job. Take a look. Take a look, and what I am so amazed about is how nicely. The natural redwood looks. I mean, let me. This is what they call a clear satin finish. You could have gotten in semi gloss or gloss, got it in satin. And I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can see the. Let me see here if I can get a. Okay, there we go. That's the, the shot I'm looking for. You see the. You can kind of see a, a gloss to it, but it's not really gloss. You can see a sheen to it. But it's. Uh, this is this is just beautiful. I mean, it looked really good. I, I put the 
just the oil down, or just the, you know, the, the natural finish, which is basically just oil. There's no stain in there. It'll look very, very good. And now I've got two coats of urethane on there. This is the oil-based urethane for extra durability. This is extra hard finish. And this is just exceeded by expectations. And, and who needs to stain redwood? Redwood's already a beautiful wood. You don't need any dyes in it to, 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 to make it look better. The, the, this is just the natural color of the redwood, just the way it comes from the tree with uh, very little enhancement. And uh, you just kind of uh, pan around, show the rest of the, of the bathroom. Got uh, tiger wood uh, on the back there. I put some of the natural, let me show you that there. I put some of the, this was looking really bad. It's been here for many, many years. It's all faded and washed out. Uh, from uh, not being cleaned and wet for a long, long time, and uh, put that uh, natural uh, stain, which is basically, and, and the oil brought brought out the grain and made it just pop. And it has two coats of a gloss urethane. And uh, anyway, oh, but anyway, I, I'm just really happy. I'm glad this stupid job's over. Oh, well, we, now I just got to put the door on, and uh, the job will be completely done. And uh, the big hero of the day was Minwax. And uh, like I say, this is the big hero. And if you want to finish your wed redwood and make it look really, really good, the oil-based polyurethane and the, the oil-based wood finish with no stain at all really looks nice.